If you're looking for an open source feature flag system, then this episode is for you. Welcome back to the Is It Observable YouTube channel. Today's episode is going to be part of a many different series. So Kubernetes, open telemetry, and probably SREs. In fact, Today's episode is going to be introducing an open source feature flag system named flag D. And you see, if you paid attention recently, we released an episode introducing to the open feature SDK and framework. And flag D is going to be one of the systems that will be attached to flag to open feature. And one of the great things, this is why it's going to be also part of Kubernetes. It's because uh, open feature has an open feature operator that basically will simplify a lot the way we're going to manage our feature flag system rules in flag D. If you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. So let's see what you are going to learn out of this episode. We'll start with an introduction on the various providers supported by the open feature framework. We'll introduce, of course, the feature flag system flag D. We'll explore the open feature operator that introduced several CRDs. And last, like we did on the previous episode, we'll look at the observability aspects provided by flag D. Like explained in the previous episode related to open feature, the open feature SDK allow us to utilize an agnostic SDK to run our feature flag evaluation. If you want to learn more about open feature, check the episode related to it. The SDK offers us many, many features to proceed to simple feature flag evaluation. So this is usually named static evaluations. We can also do complex feature flag evaluations by passing a feature flag context. For example, enabling a feature based on the age, the location, the gender, the loyalty program of the end user. The feature flag SDK allow us to connect hooks to the open feature clients to trigger actions after each successful evaluation or even only if there is an error. Hooks is an amazing feature that would be used to produce extra observability data after each evaluation. Again, like mentioned on the previous episode, don't start building hooks uh, before knowing if your feature flag system provider available in Open Feature is already producing observability data. In Open Feature, the connection with your feature flag system will be done with the help of a feature flag provider. Currently, Open Feature provides various provider, but their support depends on the language. That <clears throat> currently, Open Feature provides um, currently Open Feature provides many many providers, but their support depends about. In, as of now, here is a matrix of the various provider supported in various language. As you can see in this, prov uh, in this matrix, there is one provider that is available and supported in most of the language, and I'm referring to FlagD. FlagD is an open source feature flag systems that does not provide any UI to configure our feature flag rules. FlagD will allow us to define our feature flag rules with a JSON schema. FlagD will run close to our applications and will be responsible for watching updates on the feature flag rules used by our applications. FlagD relying on a specific JSON format to define our feature flag rules. The schema is very, very well documented. And here is the link to documentations. FlagD will have one or several flag definitions. Each flag definition will start with flag key name, and then you will have a JSON object. And then for each flag defined, you will define the state. So it could be enabled or disabled. The variance, variance would be a key value pair listing the various variants of the feature flag definitions, the various value that could be returned during the feature flag evaluations. 
then we need to define the default variance. So if you're planning to use a static flag, like a toggle, then the evaluation will be based on the value defined in the default value. If you need to create a more complex rule utilizing a feature flag context based on specific variables, then you will need to define the targeting rules. Targeting will define a list of conditions defined with if, where we define the variance selected based on the condition. Then we have if and else, where we define the variance selected for true and the variance selected for false. We have also operator like or, and, and so on. When defining our conditions, FlagD offers several operators. So we have equal, uh, strict equal, not equal, strict not equal, exists, not exists, greater than, lower, then uh, contains and not contains. We can even use an operator, operator on our variables with start with and end with. In this example, if the context has the variable email and the email ends with the domain example.com, then the variant uh, selected would be true. Otherwise, it would be false. Last, FlagD also help us to create a random distributions on variance. This is possible with the concepts of fractional. So here is an example. This example means if the context has an email, 50% would have the red color, 20% uh, blue, and the rest, 30% will be green. If the user comes with the same email, he should have the same variance selected. And if no email is being shared, then we will pick the default variant, which is red. But the other great thing with the flag D is the observability data that is able to produce. It's able to produce metrics, but also traces. But don't worry, we will look at this in details in the observability sections of this episode. To make sure your code is always pointing to the latest feature flag rule, flag D will sync with rules defined in flag D. It could be done in various ways, either with a HTTP sync, gRPC with a file or Kubernetes. But obviously, the Kubernetes is by far the most interesting one because it would rely on the open feature operator. The open feature operator will help us to deploy FlagD and moreover, simplify the way we are going to build our feature flag rules. The operator introduce new CRDs, the feature flag, the feature flag source. And you also deploy a new components named the FlagD proxy. So let's explain the purpose of each of those things. The feature flag CRD is technically the feature flag rules that we want to uh, apply to our application. So we will describe each rules utilizing the JSON schema. In this case, of course, it won't be defined in JSON, but using the YAML structure. So for example, here is a flag D uh, CRD called simple flag. And you, you, we have two variants. One is on and uh, the other is false. And the default is on. Then you have the feature flag source that will be used in the deployments of our workload to define which feature flag rule we want to inject in our application. The feature flag source will specify which feature flag rules we want to use and the, how we are going to sync with its rules. Remember, there are several ways of syncing with flag D, so the file, HTTP, gRPC, and Kubernetes. And last, there is also a last one called the flag D proxy. To make the management of our feature flag rules, I personally like the two following mode, Kubernetes and the flag D proxy. Kubernetes means that it will watch for updates on the feature flag objects deployed in our cluster. Very efficient, 
but it has to downsize. It means that we need to create the right RBAC and this R, uh, these service accounts would meet, need to be used uh, for our deployment files. And it also means that we are adding extra API requests against our Kubernetes API. Remember, it means that every time we do a feature flag evaluations, your component is going to sync uh, with flag D to see if there's any feature updates. So it will do lots, lots, lots on Kubernetes API calls to evaluate the feature flag rules. So if you're running in a large cluster, you may want to avoid this type of sync and use the other option called the flag D proxy. The flag D proxy is running in our cluster and will be in charge of linking the changes to our feature flag rules defined in our feature flag resource. The flag D proxy has the major advantage to remove those challenges. So the RBAC and the service accounts for deployments in one end. And of course, moreover, it will avoid adding all those extra calls to the Kubernetes API. Here is an example of a feature flag source. So here it's named feature flag source. So here we're linking with the source flags, simple flags. So at the end of the structure is the namespace and name of the part of, uh, the, of the, uh, the, the feature flag. The provider here is Kubernetes uh, and we have a specific custom port 88. If you're planning to collect metrics uh, and traces from feature flag evaluations, then you will need to specify the feature flag source parameter called the hotel collector URI. But don't worry, we'll touch base that later. But you may say, okay, great, we have a CRD, but how does it actually work? Well, first, if you're planning to do feature flag evaluation using flag D provider, then you will need to specify in the feature flag SDK that you want to use the flag D provider. So first in the SDK itself, when you define the feature flag client, you will define the feature flag provider, new flag D provider. It means that your application will send all the feature flag evaluation to localhost. Yes, localhost. So at the end, the operator is there to inject the right sidecar container to our workload with the right set of feature flag rules. So if you're planning to use the feature flag rules in your application, then you will need to first create the feature flag CRD uh, with your rules defined Second, you need to create the feature flag source to map your feature flag rules and the way you want to sync with it. And last, you will add the right annotations to your workload. So here are the annotations that you will need to add into your workload. So open feature uh, dev slash enable true and open feature dev slash feature flag source. And then you name uh, the feature flag source that you want to use. So to summarize, our app has the feature flag SDK with the flag D provider. The sidecar uh, container will be there to receive the all the feature flag evaluation uh, uh, generated by the SDK. And the flag D sidecar will be there to watch for updates from our feature flag rules that we have deployed in our cluster. When using feature flag, we clearly want to have extra observability to understand which feature flag is enable the portion of traffic using a specific feature and more. With open feature, this is very easy to get details that we are looking for because of the notion of hook that we presented on the episode on open feature. But if you are using flag D, then you don't need to define your hooks. The observability that you are looking for would be automatically provided by the flag D provider. When deploying flag D, we can enable the open telemetry and define the open telemetry collector endpoint that will receive the metrics and traces produces by the open telemetry SDK. But by default, it will have 
a Prometheus Explorer exposing metrics on the port 8014 and the default path will be slash metric. The port of the Prometheus Explorer can be updated by defining the, uh, the flag D source. There is a property called the metric port. In terms of metric support, it will have metrics about the uh, HTTP requests, so the duration, uh, the response size, uh, the active requests, and then the uh, impression of a feature flag. So if you enable open temperature, you also have uh, spans produced. So you'll have span kind, uh, span kind server that will be the flag evaluation service. So your name of the flag evaluation service. Then uh, when you evaluate the actual uh, rule, then you will have uh, a server JSON evaluation, an internal JSON evaluation, and those will be uh, span kind internal. The only requirement is to define a feature flag source with your open telemetry collector URL. This is possible by defining the property hotel collector URI, the telemetry data, once you enable it, uh, will be sent using the OTLP protocol, but in a gRPC format. So for example, here is an example of feature flag source where we enable the open telemetry collector URI. That's it for today's episode related to flag D and moreover to the open feature operator. I think it's a great news that uh, we have a feature flag systems that is open source. The definition is a JSON schema, not so much complicated. And by the way, if you go to flagd.dev, there is also sections where you can basically help to build your feature flag rules and generate the right JSON schema. What I really like is the notion of having the uh, the open feature operator that will simplify so much uh, the deployment of FlagD uh, by injecting this sidecar container, by adding uh, a new way of syncing with our feature flag uh, rules. So uh, I think the uh, Kubernetes uh, sync and the FlagD proxy are really interesting. I may prefer the FlagD proxy for sure, but I think it's really cool because you don't have to deploy everything by yourself. It basically out of the box comes with uh, lots of great sets of features. The last thing that I really like, uh, to be honest, is the fact of having by default the observability enabled. So no effort, just few settings to do, and we get traces and you get metrics and we will be able to do feature flag analytics. And by the way, this could be a topic uh, on how we could basically uh, uh, analyze feature flags using the open symmetry stack sent over to flag D. So that could be something that we're going to touch base on a specific episode that will cover the tutorial. So we will try to utilize flag D, the open feature SDK, and of course the open feature operator. So lots of topics that we covered through this, this tutorial. So if you're looking for this tutorial, be patient. It will be released uh, soon. Uh, it's just a matter of building a tutorial. All right. So if you enjoyed today's content, don't forget to like, and subscribe to the channel. So see you soon for another episode. Bye.